Gilbert Gottfried, and I'm here with my co-host, Frank Santo Padre, and this is another special Patreon episode. It is. And we have our special guests, John Fodiatis, yeah. Joe, Joe McGinty, and John Murray, and Seth Saltzman. Hey! How about that? Gil, you are a pro's pro. Yes. <laughs> I'm going to go lie down. So wrap, wrap up the show for me. <laughs> Good night, everybody. Do you recognize any of these four gentlemen? Ah, uh, well, there's the one with the strange name. <laughs> Tom Forkiakis. <laughs> this is the first time you've ever seen me, right, Gil? Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. You know, <laughs> John Murray's on with us every week. Yes. John John has been working as our engineer, sa- saving the show on a weekly basis. Yeah, he's he's the one with that, uh, like like a child molester voice. <laughs> can, can I hear? Can I hear you say, "Hey, kid, you want some candy?" <laughs> uh, to refresh Gil's memory. We have John Murray, who's with us every week. The great, the great John Fodiatis, also known as Tom Fokiakis, if you're a regular listener Come, to this show. Bobby Blyvin! Yeah. Amongst other aliases, I might add. The gifted Joe McGinty of Sid Gold's fame and many other famous, uh, many other achievements in the music industry. And of course, our friend Seth Saltzman. Ask Cap Bigwig. And musical contributor. And, uh, when Mario Cantone comes on, I'm in. He's the, <laughs> yeah, he, he is the Cantone whisperer. <laughs> and these four gentlemen have something in common. They're all musicians, and they all have contributed to this show greatly. And so we thought we hadn't done a music episode in a long time, Gil. Oh, okay. Unless you want to count hanging out with Dennis DeYoung. Uh, yeah, 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 that I count. That's a, that's a music episode. Yeah. But we haven't done anything uh, like our old mini episodes, and I thought we'd get all the boys together and just talk about music and talk about Gilbert's singing, <laughs> one of his favorite subjects, and talk about previous podcast musical guests. I always love the minis. Uh, Me too. Oh, oh, John, John, can you say... Uh, I'm looking for my puppy. Can you ride in a van with me? You're going to get him arrested, man. Murray's, somebody's going to show up in cuffs at Murray's house as soon as this is over. Before we talk about the musical stylings of Gilbert Gottfried, quickly, I want to recap how you guys found out about the show. Now, John Murray and Seth I have history with. Seth, Seth I've known for 35 years. John I went to college with, so I've known him, what, 40 years, John? Yeah, 40 years. Not, not wow. to date us. Jesus mm-hmm. Christ. Uh, <laughs> let's start with John, uh, with Tom Fokiakis, also known as John Fodiatis. J- John, <laughs> you have come into our lives recently. I, I certainly have, I six guess. Six years ago. Wow, has it been six years? Been six I can't years. believe it. How did you Mommy, up, have his... <laughs> <laughs> That's when the nightmares began. You know, it's funny. What a coincidence. I was Googling Gilbert's name on yeah. YouTube, believe it or not, because I wanted to find some of those old Howard Stern bits that would just, you know, cut me to pieces and have me drive off the road in the old yep. days. Yep. And I came across the podcast. I didn't know what it was about, so I started listening. And I got so caught up with it because I thought it was great. And uh, wrote you guys some fan mail, and we started corresponding, and that was it. And the next and thing you know, are. you were in indentured servitude, writing music. And, for and the, the next thing I know, I'm loaning Gilbert a hundred dollars. I don't know. How that <laughs> <laughs> John composed some music for the show, including something he's going to do for us today. But uh, yeah. his his trippy listener mail theme, one of our <laughs> listener mail themes, John Murray composed the other one, uh, and. Uh, we, we had to have him. He's an architect turned musician. Right. Here now, I am. Or a musician turned and architect. here he is. <laughs> and, and we're a big fan here of interstitial music. We are. <laughs> we're yeah. Gonna, we're going to get to that. McGinty, yes. McGinty 
How did you discover us? Because I can't remember how we met. Well, it's a funny, small world kind of thing because Dara came into Sid Gold's really right after we opened, and it was a really slow night. And uh, she put her, her name in, or she said her friend put her name in to sing Delta Dawn, and it said... Dara, oh, yeah, that's Dara, her fave. Dara Gottfried, and I said, oh, you related to Gilbert? And she said, yes. I was like, well, my friend Mike McPadden does your uh, web stuff, your social media <laughs> stuff, and Mike just happened to be coming into town the next The Dead night. Sea wow. episode. So wow. I yeah. think Mike came back. I think, Frank, you might have come with along. So that's kind of yep. how it's... Yeah, we had a night at Sid Gold's. Before we did our sing-along, the, the, lo- the famous Lost Episodes, Gilbert. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I have some of it on video. Yeah, there, John has some of it on video. But jo, but Joe, uh, bring our, the people who are listening to the show who might not be familiar with Sid Gold's, bring us up to speed on what it is, where it is. Well, it's a piano bar in the Chelsea neighborhood of Manhattan. And uh, on, uh, due to what's going on now, we're not open. But uh, on a normal night, we have piano players that play, have lists of hundreds of songs. Anybody can get up and sing uh, what, with great pianists accompanying you. And while we're shut down, we're doing this online. We have a virtual piano bar every night at 7.30. So you can tune in to facebook.com slash Sid Golds and <laughs> right. uh, sing along at home. But we can't wait to be back because it's a great uh, <laughs> community experience. It's, you can you, sit around you should... the piano. You can sing along. There's great singers. There's awful singers and everything in between. So it's a lot of fun. Well, and you we... know, um, I think you could keep the place open, but you just have three customers mm. <laughs> <laughs> Social and <distancing>. metal dividers. <laughs> well, there are some nights that are like that. Gilbert, your singing might enforce social distancing. <laughs> we did That's we true. did a sing along there. We did one hit wonders. We had a we had a uh, a technical breakdown. We lost the three episodes, which has become infamous on this podcast. But then we did another one last year. In fact, a year ago this month, we were back at Sid Gold's. Gilbert, remember it was Lily's birthday. Yes. And we did we did story songs. Oh wow! How and cool is a, that? We did another wow. sing along. Uh, quickly before we get to Gilbert singing, Seth, how did you come <laughs> back into my life? You were the musical director on a sketch comedy show that I wrote thirty years ago. Yes, we were doing wow. the show at the Thirteenth Street Playhouse. We were opening Thirteenth Street for Theater. Brother- yeah. Yeah, we opened for, for Brother, Brother Theodore. Theodore. That's right. That's right. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. And, yeah. Yeah, and live to tell about it. It was yeah, called yeah, Firing crazy. Squad. It was a comedy group, and Seth was the the, uh, the keyboardist and the musical director. But but we lost touch for, for decades. We lost touch. Um, I'm not sure. Maybe Facebook, but I'm not sure. No, no. I think we found each other. Um, maybe you emailed me and said you haven't heard from yeah. me in a long time. But we got together and... Uh, Fell it right back in with each other. And, and Seth and Joe did the musical. Uh, they were the they were two thirds of the band at our sixth anniversary show recently. You're in the right the place. Room. And last but not least, John right. John Murray, you and I lost some touch over the years too. We go back to the School of Visual <laughs> Arts. Right. Did yeah. the podcast uh, bring us back together? Oh no. Okay. We had we had reunions and we kept in uh, we kept in touch during that time. But you don't remember because you know. Because I'm an, I'm self-absorbed and a narcissist. <laughs> let's talk. Let's talk about Gilbert singing, which is the reason we're all here. I think he sings great. Do you? Yeah, I do. I, I, I mean, want I want the opinion of four professional musicians. Now he sings, Gilbert. When you sing, it's kind of a gag. I don't know that you take yourself seriously. But he's as a in singer, pitch. But he's, he's in pitch. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Pitch. yeah. Can you elaborate on that? Sure. Sure. When, you know, when you guys. Uh, Bring something up and he starts singing. He's he's in pitch and then I I've pulled his audio and I didn't do anything to it. I just pulled his audio oh, and threw an orchestra say, behind it. Can you say, little boy, I want to pull your audio? <laughs> <laughs> don't you don't indulge oh, him, John? Yeah, you know, come on now, John. John will be I'll be seeing you in the big house. <laughs> Would you say that? And this just happens to be the episode of my daughter's, like right over here. Of course, I told you to bring your daughter in at the end after the after the film. (laughs) No, I was thinking, John. Were you going to say that what Gilbert lacks in rhythm, he makes up in pitch? How does that work? You know, he's he's in pitch throughout. Uh, Like we do, Dummy in the Window. I didn't do anything to that. I just all I did was put the the music behind Dummy in the Window, and he's just singing. Uh, You (laughs) you want to check some of this out? Just listen. Yeah, let's let's hear it. Okay. This is a dance mix of Dummy in the Window. (laughs) (laughs) 
I mean, come on. <laughs> it's beautiful. Like, like hearing Victor moan. So, I mean, he just went off. You know, he goes off. Yeah, he, he goes off and starts singing. And, some, and Frank, you know, he'll just go and take oh, it to I the know. end. Oh, I know. I'm familiar. And, right. And, but he stays in pitch the entire time. I'm talking, I'm talking as if he's not here. <laughs> <laughs> Joe, do you have an opinion on this? On, oh, on yeah. Gilbert being in pitch? Uh, yeah, in pitch, sometimes the rhythm gets, you know, a little bit wiggly here and there. But, you know, it's like as long as you end up in the same place, it's fine. Uh, what amazes me about Gilbert is his incredible memory of knowing the lyrics to so many of these obscure theme songs. It's uncanny. I think, I think once he sang uh, Don't Give Up On Us by uh, David Soule yep. and remembered the bridge. I don't even remember the bridge <laughs> of that song. <laughs> You know, I lost my head last night. You've got a right to stop oh, believing. Believe There's still a little love left, even so. Wow. Wow. That's it. Very good. Would have been a much bigger hit if Gilbert sang it. I the think, one he know. stunned me with, Gilbert, the first time you pulled that out was way back when we had Henry Winkler on, and you knew the entire Lords of Flatbush. Yes. Wow. Yes. Song. <laughs> yeah. Boom. 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 Do 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 do. Hey, hey, what do you say? Looks like it's going to be a very fine day. That's it. My, yeah. <laughs> so how does a man with per, with uh, with uh, ideal pitch yes. uh, manage to wind up eight minutes behind every time he's <laughs> What do you want, everything? <laughs> That's what engineers are for. Seth, of all the sing-alongs, now you've listened to a lot of these episodes. Yes. Of the Jimmy Webb, of the Tony Orlando, uh, Richard Marks, uh, our friend Paul Williams, Tommy James, uh, Peter Asher, Kenny Loggins. What is your favorite Gilbert sing-along? Uh, I'm going to have to go with the Paul Williams Shirley Temple duet. <laughs> 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 which which I, I still lose sleep over and uh, yeah. kind of see so does Paul. about. <laughs> yeah, that makes Paul Williams climb under the desk. <laughs> Should I do any of that now? Maybe not, because we're gonna put, we're gonna put this up as a video. Uh, John Fodiad, John, John, you've never missed an episode. What? what no, I what, haven't. What actually. Gilbert sing along stirs you? Stirs your loins? Oh man, I gotta say the Tony Orlando really did it to me. Oh, did you know? tie a yellow ribbon. I just love. Yeah, that was unbelievable. It's like I wanted to go into prison after I heard that. You know? Yeah, Dar Dara and I were on that one too. Yeah. Wow. Uh, also, want to wish a happy birthday, by the way, to Gilbert, two previous uh, music guests on the show, Peter Asher and Howard Kalen of the Turtles. Oh, wow. Yes. Celebrating birthdays today. Wow. Uh, also, two oh. guys you sang with. Oh, yes. And and didn't, isn't uh, Bernie Coppell? Yesterday. Having a birthday. Yeah. Yeah. Bernie, Co Bernie Coppell yesterday. Uh, John Murray. Yes. Favorite Gilbert sing along? It's got to be Roop. Rupert. Absolutely. The Pina when Colada it, song? Oh, hell yeah. I mean, I was waiting. <laughs> to, I, I was sitting there waiting. And then when the tagline comes in and Gilbert just, that's it. <laughs> if you like Pina Colada <laughs> and being caught in the rain. Yeah. <laughs> oh, God. Somebody, somebody want to send this to Rupert? Yeah, I, you know I will. <laughs> what did you guys think of the Sinatra clip that I, that I sent over today? Gilbert yeah. Gilbert has a special fondness for Frank's cover of Mrs. Robinson. Uh, that is brilliant. Oh, how's your birth, <laughs> Mrs. Robinson? Go, 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 go. <laughs> and Jilly Rizzo gets a shout-out. Jilly Rizzo, the Jilly Rizzo reference. Anytime he does any of those swinging songs from the 60s, it just doesn't work for me. Yeah. It really doesn't. Yeah. Yeah. Ring a ding ding, ding. <laughs> Mrs. <laughs> Robinson. Yeah, it's painful. <laughs> What'd you think, McGinty? You thought you knew every Frank Nancy collaboration? 
it, we've done uh, Nancy Sinatra Losers Lounge shows. We've done Rat Pack, but I did not know that one. And uh, it's it would have been a great one to do at one of our shows because we love those kind of little known obscurities because we like to celebrate the bad and the good. Of course, on equal terms. Gilbert, we got to get Nancy Sinatra on this show, no matter what, no matter uh, what, it, yeah, no matter, uh-huh. no matter what it takes. I uh, want to <laughs> ask you guys. Gee. I asked this to John Murray the other day, and I thought this was uh, i thought this was a pretty good question for guys who write music. What, and I'm going to ask each one of you, what song do you put on? What album do you put on? Seth, we'll start with you. That, to get in the mood, and I don't mean the sex mood. I mean the writing mood. I mean to, to, to inspire you creatively, to, to uh, uh, address writer's block. What, what do you put on that, that pushes all your buttons? Uh, from a singer-songwriter... It's almost always going to be Billy Joel. Really? For sure. But but mid Billy Joel, you know, some of the early stuff I love, Cold Spring Harbor. Uh, but it's really when I get to 52nd Street to see where Billy Joel was going. It's just amazing. Uh, I'll put on Paul Williams records. Me too. Right. You know, I have them all. I have all the vinyl. I got a bunch of them here in vinyl. Yeah. Absolutely. Where he goes, I can tell a Paul Williams song a mile away. Just the rhythmic things he does, the harmonies he does. Hello, with a fiction <laughs> from a sentimental fool to a little boy who's broken every rule. One that takes me up when all the others seem to... Gil, he's got the music. Oh, <laughs> my God! Yeah, he owns it. He's my, a Paul Williams You pure. have it on your piano. <laughs> <laughs> hey, It'll never work. Um, it won't work. <laughs> <laughs> but you'll autograph for me next time we're in the Oh, absolutely. <laughs> John Murray, same question. What do you put on? Well, what what inspires you? What moves you? What gets you going? Yellow Brick Road. Yeah, we talked about it before we turned the mics on. Yeah, Goodbye, Yellow Brick Road. Yellow Brick Road. I mean, First I album I, I ever it. bought. Me too. And uh, I have it in every incarnation. I've got the vinyls. I had the eight tracks. I had the cassettes. I had the CDs. I have the DTS version of it. And you have the, the yellow. Making of. You have the yellow vinyl. Got it all. Masterpiece. <laughs> Album's a masterpiece. Good yeah. stuff. Yeah, yeah. I just I can't get it. And I keep looking every time I buy an incarnation of it. I think I'm going to get something more because there just never was enough in that particular album. Uh, every song is a little different than the next, um, and they're all great. And um, those extra long songs, uh, Funeral for a Friend and Love Lies Bleeding. and Your I sister mean, can't it, twist, but she can rock and roll. Uh, and uh, I've seen that movie, too. You know, it's talking great, about that one. Uh, it's a masterpiece. Early. I there love that a masterpiece. Song. There's a terrific documentary made by Brian Forbes, the British director, uh, which they released. Have you guys seen this documentary? They released it as one of those, uh, the Rhino collection of um, classic albums. Hmm. Making of Yellow Brick Road. I don't yeah, think I've seen really that good, one. Hmm. really fantastic. John Fodiata, same question. What I love that. A, what, I, what I love that on? album, <clears throat> Yellow Brick Road. I listened to when I when I first. I don't think it was the first one I got. I think the very first vinyl I bought was actually Elton John's Greatest Hits. Remember that? Sure. Yeah, because yeah, I think that came out what 76? 70, 75, 76. Five six, right? But for me, the go-to album for inspiration is always, it's always been Sgt. Pepper. It always will be. And uh, although lately, what I've been listening to more than any other album in my collection is uh, Bowie's Hunky Dory. I think that is just an absolute masterpiece. And I just go back to it for song structure, for, you know, just the way every, it's assembled, the way it sounds sonically. Did I you like it when it first came out, or did you mature to it? Did I wasn't. I wasn't aware it? of it when it first came out, you know, because I, I didn't. I didn't actually start listening to that kind of music until the mid seventies, and that was like seventy one, seventy two, I think. But I discovered it. You know, the big explosion for me was in the eighties. You know, when I kind of started buying everything. I was listening to everything from Bach to jazz to, you know, music concrete. You know, I mean, crazy stuff. Because that album is 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 so art. It's it's a it's great. Of artwork, it's a very right? artsy, yeah, and uh, yeah. and that's what I'm drawn to now. I'm drawn to very artsy music, you know. Do you think he went over his audience's head, like uh, the teens, the kids that were buying albums? Well, I think th- I think that's what the magic of Bowie was that he could, you know, write the most incredible hooks that could that could like get inside a 12 year old or 13 year old's brain. But then when you look at the lyrics, I mean, he's invoking everything from, uh, you know, 
I, I mean, you know, Aleister Crowley to, uh, you know, Himmler. I mean, crazy, crazy vi I I imagery, you know. That's what I'm saying about so, that album. It, it's yeah. it's art. Yeah, it's a piece it of really artwork. And I, and I wonder if it's it was too sophisticated for teens at the time but i think uh, i think it's probably uh it's probably gotten you know kind of more of a following in retrospect right sure. so, that, so did, do you yeah. appreciate it more now oh than, absolutely yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. joe mcginty yeah. same question what, well, what do you what do you put on to get kind of hard to, to get the, to get it all flowing kind of hard to narrow down but i agree with these guys i mean i think the best music is uh things that you know combine great songwriting catchy melodies and then some sort of like artistic element like pet sounds you know the orchestration in pet sounds or like brian wilson using a theremin or prepared piano or whatever uh i mean pet sounds is definitely one of them uh today is todd rundgren's birthday huh. who i would lo oh, yeah. love to see as a guest <laughs> and chris christopherson uh, too that's oh, right yeah Big Frank, you see, so, uh, when you do things like that, Frank, this is what I'm saying. Like, I know it's just, scary. The it shit is. In my head. <laughs> Gilbert, did you buy records? Did you buy singles or did you buy no. albums? Oh, I yeah, I have the singles. I still have a bunch that you used to put that plastic swastika <laughs> in. Uh, <laughs> yellow. Gilbert still has yellow. That. Yeah. Gilbert's, and that would that. fit to make it fit on the uh, record player. Do you remember the first single you bought, Gil? Or the first album you bought? Oh, my God. Let's you, see what album, what what singles I had. Or did, did Arlene and Karen have records in the uh, house? Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. There were a couple of Beatles. Uh, I remember, oh, I had Pafalafica <laughs> from... Uh, Soupy sales. Soupy sales. <laughs> They're saying it all over Turkey. Uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> that he remembers. He remembers Papalafica. I bought comedy albums I, too. I remember. Uh, my mother bought me a, a little, yeah, single. Yeah. Uh, when, when, because I just heard it on t on TV. I'm seeing it. And and I I said I liked it. And I mean it wasn't that big a thing. <clears throat> but it was a song oh God. It was uh I think Billy Joe Royal. Oh, down in the boondocks? No. This one was <laughs> Yeah, 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 yeah. I knew you when you were lonely. I knew when you were only. <laughs> I wow. That's all I remember. Stayed in your head all wow. these years. Yeah. That's Billy Joe hook. Royal. I think the first single I ever bought was the Banana Splits "Tra La La" ah. song, -la -la, -la -la. <laughs> written by the late great Mark Barkin. I know. I thought and Bob Joe... Marley. I thought Bob Marley wrote that. For well, me. <laughs> <laughs> Joe McGinty introduced me to the writer of that song, Mark Mark Barkin, who came to a uh, Losers Lounge show. Yeah, his daughter was singing. His daughter is a very talented singer, Bridget Barkin. And, right. Uh, right. Savity passed away very recently because he. Uh, when I met him, just super full of energy and great stories. Great um, talent. Wrote pretty, uh, pretty Flamingo, one of my favorites. Right, right. All right, real quick. John Fodiata's first single, first 45 you bought. First 45 I bought, believe it or not, was Elton John's version of Lucy in the Sky with Diamonds. Oh, yes. Remember that? Se and that 70, was... 75. Yeah. I, could, yeah. I, was, I was just blown away by that. And I think uh, it's yeah. the only Beatles cover to go to number one. Right, right. He, and John Lennon was on that track, actually. I think when they were doing Whatever Gets You Through the Night, the same sessions, they uh, recorded that track as well, the Lucy now, cover. Who sang, I forget the name of the group that sang Judy in Disguise. John Fred and his Playboy band. <laughs> Oh Thank my God! You. <laughs> you're, you're as bad as him. Look, I'm pointing. I'm pointing like he's in that square. Yeah. McGinty was about to say it, right, Joe? You had it. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, I, I'm doing this too. Whenever I get on Zoom, I look at the film of each person and smile at them. <laughs> <laughs> Joe, give us a little of it. You know it by heart. <laughs> Judy in disguise, <laughs> that's what you are. Lemonade pie, yeah. That's great. I don't remember. 
That's a, that's a, that's wow. the best I remember. You yeah. have to take Meyer your glasses. Yeah. 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 You're in disguise. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Seth, first single you bought. Uh, first single, no question. I, I know the first album I bought because my cousin Mark Stein is in the Vanilla Fudge. Oh, wow. wow. Oh, you didn't know that. Vanilla oh, Fudge. hold wow. it on me. So, yeah, so I had Vanilla Fudge records as a little kid. Um, a lot of acid going on in my house. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but Trippy the, the family. Fir- the first single I absolutely remember buying was asking my father to pick up uh, Hey Jude. Wow. Didn't you, have to, I, didn't I, you have to flip Hey Jude to hear the other side, the, other, the whole song? Revolution. Revolution was the flip side. No, no. Revolution was on okay, the flip side. No, they, they got seven minutes, but I remember because I still have the single and I wrote my name on it. Seth Salzman. <laughs> wow. I think I, wow. And I think I need you, McGinty, for two notes. Uh-oh. Ah. Uh, Come to me tonight. <laughs> Something like Cause that. I remember it. Show you the strings of my kite. Dun, dun. Right. Come to me tonight. Right. Yeah. Pretty yeah. cool bridge, you know. Gil, we'll book John Fred so you can do a duet with him. Oh, okay. <laughs> John Murray, first 45 you bought. Well, you know, my house, I had a lot of 45s from my aunts, my uncles, my parents. Uh, but the one I bought was Peace Train. I still remember it. Oh, it's a, cat, it's a cat, great yeah. song. Wow. It was a green uh, slipcase for the single. And uh, I played the hell out of that record. And and I, I still have it. And I just bought my daughter um, a turntable. It's her first turntable because she wants to listen to some of my old records. And I just gave her a Peace Train. She just, uh, now she has it. T for the Tillerman's. Uh, 50 years old. A great album. This year. Are we, are, are, are we getting old or what? Yeah. <laughs> McGinty, first 45, and then we're going to hear from Seth. Seth's going to uh, going to favor us with a tune. First single sure. you bought. Uh, I don't know. It's it's a little bit of a blur, but I think it was Last Train to Clarksville by the Monkees, because I remember Ooh. having that in the cool Call Gems logo. Oh, yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Voice yeah. and heart. Yeah, classic. Good, good yeah. choice. Yeah. All right, Seth. You're the, you're the first victim tonight. A classic Paul Williams song, the theme from The End. Oh, okay. That one I want. Okay. All right, you got it. Gilbert's <laughs> Choice. Gilbert's Choice. Here's another fine mess. I'm into honey. A little bit sad and a little bit funny i'm a fighter but they got me on the floor i don't believe i'm gonna take it anymore here's another fine mess i've stumbled into the sorriest state that i've ever been to it's difficult for some to understand i'm gonna knuckle down and take it like a man wave goodbye don't try to talk what's there to say words are unimportant this feeling will remember anyway Wave goodbye Don't make a scene Just let it go Don't smother love and glory Put an end to our story We're riding for the final roundup This is where the old trail wound up Here's another fine mess And not my choosing We love for a while You can't call that losing If I knew our love was gonna end this way Wide-eyed we live it And I wouldn't change a day Here's another fine Thank you. Wonderful. Very cool. Terrific song. Seth Saltzman interpreting his pal and his boss. My boss. Uh, Paul Williams. President of ASCAP. And uh, he's in great shape. Spoke to him a couple weeks ago. He's in oh. L.A. He's feeling great. He's terrific. Give him our love. Yeah. He's due back here. He's over we- we- I got a couple of quick questions from listeners that I'm going to ask before we go to our next singer. Uh, Gilbert, this is for you. Joe Peterson wants to know, is there any song that Gilbert flat out refuses to sing? (laughs) (laughs) I don't have anything that pops out at me, but there are ones where I go, eh, that doesn't do it for me. Yeah, but you're such a trooper. You sang I Am Woman. Yeah. On this this very podcast. Here's one for uh, our friend John Fodiatis. This is from the great Eric Rhine. Ah, yeah. Our super fan. Uh, Hey, uh, John, if Caesar's Palace offered you a million dollars a year to play MacArthur Park a few times a week, would you take the gig? 
I would take it for twenty dollars. <laughs> <laughs> I would take it. Yeah, yeah. I would yeah. do it anyway. Got... Tom Forkyakis would do it for nothing. <laughs> <laughs> you know what he's referring to with that question, Gilbert? Yeah, it's like Jimmy Webb. I got so pissed off at him. <laughs> but they they offered him a shitload of money. Right. I mean, you could get a two year old to play MacArthur Park, <laughs> and and he they said that's all. That's all we need you for. Come in, play MacArthur Park. Go out to your room or the gambling table. We don't give a fuck, and we'll give you <laughs> shitloads of money. And I think I think when he's old enough. His kid should put him in a really <laughs> low-class, city-run nursing home <laughs> and say, well, oh, we, nice. we could have had you living at home with helpers, but you fucked it up. <laughs> this goes right in the act, Gilbert. Here's one for Seth from our friend the rabbi, David Komarovsky. Oh, oh, I would God like bless. to I, I would like rabbi. to hear Mr. He said, I would like to hear Mr. Saltzman's Haftarah. Oh, Excellent. Uh, I got it. Ready? <laughs> yeah. Uh, it, it's tell him it's toldot, T O L D O T, and it goes like this: the first line, Masa Devrado Noi, Israel Bayad, Malachi Ahati Echem. There you go. That's the beginning of the Haftarah. When my bar mitzvah, when I was thirteen, Excellent. I remember. Thank you. I'm going to hell for that. No, no, it was so terrific. Thank you. <laughs> No, he is the spiritual advisor of the program. You have to understand that. Yes. No, but I know. Here's one can from I, To close ahead, that off, can I just say, <laughs> You know, I converted soon after I heard that. <laughs> <laughs> To Buddhism. Our <laughs> friend Josh Chambers has one, and anybody can answer this. Jo our friend Josh Chambers says, Years ago I heard a musician discuss how certain chords and keys hit on emotions. Uh, their choices lead to sad songs or happy tunes. Is this BS? No, it's not BS. Can, uh, ma John, majors you take and, it? and major sevenths uh, sound really happy, whereas minors and diminished sound sad. Like if I did a, can, a C yeah. or a C major seventh. If I did a minor, that's a C minor. It's very sad. So minor chords are generally sad, whereas majors and major sevenths sound really happy. Uh, Seth, would you agree? Absolutely. There you go. Well, you know, in Spinal Tap, it's D minor is the D saddest minor. of all keys. <laughs> <laughs> it is. And, and watch to get rev people up. What music... What notes would rip people up? Like the big, you know, fight at the end of the movie or something Power like chords. that. Power chords. Can we hear... You know, if you get your Rocky stuff going on there. <laughs> yeah. Excellent. See, see Gilbert, look, Excellent. look what we're learning today. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Dustin Hoff, this one's for you, Dara. How about Barry Manilow for a guest suggestion? Be awesome. Well, oh, I would love to have him. On. We would all love. We would all love to have him on. And uh, we've been trying for what are we doing? Have been doing the show uh, six years. We uh, one we of my touch. favorites is uh, the uh, Ready to Take a Chance again. That's one of my favorite Gilbert moments. Which oh, you sang at remind me, <laughs> I'm sorry, I, I live up. in a shell, <laughs> safe from the past. I'm doing okay, but not very well. No jolts, no surprises. <laughs> No crisis arises. My life goes along as it should. Now it'll never come. <laughs> we, Dara and I have been working the Barry Manilow front pretty hard, and we will I, we will never give up. Yeah, Barry the Jew Manilow. <laughs> yeah. That, yeah, that'll get him here. <laughs> All right, we're going to move to our next musical selection. We, if, if you would have let me say the Jew, we could have gotten Theodore Bekel. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're, you're a little late. You're a tad late on that one. Mr. Fotiatis. 
Yes, yes sir. I, I understand that you have an original composition wow. that has something to do with this podcast. I, oh. uh, well, as a matter of fact, I happen to have one. Um, I'm going to just turn around and so I can play it a bit more easy. But yes, uh, a couple of years back, I wrote a song called The Ballad of Gilbert and Frank. And I actually sent it to you. And it was like this country and Western, you know, thing. And I never heard back from you, Frank. So I thought you were. I thought it's he was, not well, personal. You know, I thought. I thought. You know, I thought it was okay. I'm just going to get a cease and desist order from Frank at this point. You know, no, no. I, mean? I, I was working 65 hour weeks, and it somehow flew under my radar. Well, anyway, so I, so I, I'll. I, uh, I finally heard it, and I urged yeah. John to bring it onto the show. And yeah, he, like the. Uh, go ahead. Go ahead. And yeah. here it is. All right. So this is. This is uh, this is the ballad of Gilbert and Frank. I hope uh, I hope it comes through. So um, here we go. Well, it was way back in the seventies. A couple of guys from Brooklyn and Queens had stars in their eyes as they were just starting out in their teens. Maybe it was their destiny This mutual interest in comedy Frank used to write a whole lot of pages Gilbert performed on a whole lot of stages But they both soon learned that timing is the key You see, Gilbert and Frank had amazing colossal ambitions Raised on a diet of bad monster movies Late night TV, old cartoons and Three Stooges Throw in a midget or two and the podcast was there Now things weren't so easy when the podcast began Gilbert had a real short attention span And the guests that Frank wanted, well most of them were already dead. <laughs> but they quickly found a way to get by. The trick is to book them before they die. And if they're out of ideas, tell the one about Caesar. Those oranges wedges still a crowd pleaser. Or you can tell them the one about Danny Thomas instead. You see, Gilbert and Frank had amazing colossal ambitions. With nothing to lose, they went out on their own comic missions. Raised on a diet of bad monster movies, late night TV, old cartoons, and three stooges. Throw in a midget or two, and the podcast was born. Throwing a midget or two in the podcast was born. One more time, everybody. Throwing, Throwing a midget or two when the podcast was born. <laughs> and that was uh, Tom Fortiakis and the Greek Goat Fuckers with the Ballad of Gilbert and Frank. For a little wow. dog named I got, a, I got a tear. I, I, Excuse me. Now, what's, what's a couple of notes for when the character just realizes it? It all comes together. Oh, diminished chords. <laughs> diminished. Excellent. Gilbert, are you planning to write a film score? <laughs> he is. Good questions, though. He has good questions. He's very curious about music. I can tell. Yeah. Gil, if you ever took up an instrument, what would it have been? <laughs> uh, you know, I think I took piano lessons for about a week and a half. Uh, you think when you I did? Was really? <laughs> yeah. I, I took, I wouldn't know any of them. On my own, I figured out the jaws of the two notes. <laughs> <laughs> You're a genius. 
Okay, speaking of birthdays, Lalo Schifrin turned 88 yesterday. Ooh. Oh, bum, cool guy. Bum. Oh, play it. Play it. Mission Impossible. McGinty, you know it? <laughs> Close enough. I don't know. Yeah. There's actually lyrics to that. It is. Uh, I can't do them, but they're, they're you know. Yeah, that's, that's sort of a passion of yours, isn't it? To, uh, yeah, yeah. Unknown <laughs> lyrics to TV themes. All right, right. They're a couple. <laughs> the oh, the God, couple one is the worst. <laughs> oh. There we go. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Since you got the whole book there, and, don't you? And He's got Lalo the fake Schifron yeah. also wrote the music for Bad Medicine, which no one ever saw. Which you were in with uh, yes. Alan Arkin, who we just yeah. had on the show, and uh, <laughs> Julie Haggerty. Yeah. If you didn't see it, you didn't miss a thing. He wrote some great TV themes, <laughs> Maddox oh, and Medical Center and a bunch of them. But and, my fit. Yeah. Go ahead. No, and Bring also it. Cool Hand Luke. And Well, yeah, he wrote oh. Cool Hand Luke and, and uh, oh. Bullet. But Cool Hand Luke, the cool thing about that is the tar sequence. You know when they're tarring the road in Cool Hand Luke? That sequence when they're all yes. in the tar and they're throwing yes. the hay. They ended up using that clip, became the ABC Eyewitness News theme. Go on. We, I, yes. Wow. Yes. The, the, I remember when I, I saw Cool Hand Luke after I had been listening to the 10 o'clock news for years. And then I saw I couldn't take it seriously. I thought, like, <laughs> why are they using the news theme? It was a great choice for a news theme, but that's uh, that, it was written for the film. Seth, didn't Billy Joel lift that for you? Were talking about Billy Joel for Angry Young Man, the the. Uh, yeah, yeah. I want to use. I want to. Use. <laughs> no, but you know what I mean. Kind of, kind of reminiscent of that. A little, little bit yeah. there. I do love that song. Here it is. Yeah. Now for the 8 o'clock news. <laughs> nice. Stop signs have been found everywhere. So Lalo, so Lalo gets a check, huh, Seth? Lalo gets a check. Many. <laughs> okay, we were talking. Well, now John in his song just mentioned our obsession with TV themes. So I'll do another quick round robin. I, and bring going back to Lalo, for my money, Mission Impossible is the greatest TV theme ever composed. And I know it's all personal taste. But I, I, I just I can't think of a better one. Joe McGinty. Uh, I mean, I guess I agree to the, with that one. Um I don't know. There's so many good ones. I like the theme from SWAT, for instance. <laughs> SWAT. <laughs> da -da -da, da -da -da. Who's know. the composer of that? That you know that one. I don't know. I don't know that. Well, Wait, for which one? SWAT. Theme from SWAT. The theme from oh, the theme okay. from SWAT. He likes. <laughs> Seth, same question. Oh. 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 Mike, Mike, Mike Post? Post. Mike, Mike Post. Post. Yeah, great, Mike great Post theme. who wrote the Rockford Files theme. Yep. Oh, that's a great That might be my favorite. I'm changing mine. You're changing <laughs> to the Rockford Files theme? Yeah. Oh, that you was know, a great theme. Can I hear a little of the Rockford Files? You got that, Joe? You, 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 you have the TV fake look. Walt uh, sets looking for the Rockford Files theme. <laughs> John Fodiatis, favorite TV theme? It's got to be the Monsters, man. I can't, you know, I love oh, the Monsters. Oh, yeah. Yes. 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 I love it. Yeah. So I, I have the lyrics to that one if you if you know any of them. Yeah. That's a good one. Rockford Files. Wasn't that one. like a radio hit as well at some point? Oh I remember yes. that on the radio. Yeah. That was a hit. Yeah, they yeah. used to release theme songs as uh, as singles. Right, and they'd be longer. They'd have like a solo in the middle. They kind of extend them, so they were more than like a minute long. It was, I'm yeah, extremely fun. fond of. I don't know if you guys like this one. It's a little more obscure. Uh, Patrick Williams uh, theme from the streets of San Francisco. I don't remember that. That one. That one rocks out. Pretty good. John Murray. Last. Uh, same question. Go ahead. This is mine. Ready? This is mine. It's a great one. <laughs> oh! It's a great one. I'm gonna have to change my vote. Yeah, this is great. Oh, <laughs> Come on. 
I so John Williams. Yeah, so good. Come on. Oh, Way before oh, I did you, a lot of the great stuff. So good. You, you know, like you're dealing with God and the heavens. If right? John Williams is <laughs> yeah. playing. Where does he get all this great stuff from? I, I mean, that that really is a great one. I might have to I might have to change my vote. And I'm fun, can I'm, I can I go. hear a little of uh, Greatest American Hero thing? <laughs> okay, Seth. Joe, you, Joe, you got that? I I think you have the fake book, so I think I'll. Believe it or not, I'm walking on air. I can't really believe it's true. could it be? That yeah. whole era, yeah. oh, d- during that time, those TV theme shows were uh, the, the the themes were so good they became singles. They were so good. The yeah. Happy oh, Days, yeah. uh, theme from Angie. Uh, what, right. Well, that's name? both of those are Charlie Fox. I mean, our pal Charlie Fox. So good. Yeah. So and, good. And you know, with theme songs, we'll have to do an entire show. I mean, the Miller Boyette, any one of those, and others, where the theme song was. Uh, we may, you know, it would basically be, we may have trouble, things will go bad, we'll get sad, but as long as we're together, everything will be fine. How many yeah. songs? They were a lot. <laughs> well, well, Gilbert, well, Gilbert, you always like the TV themes that explain the show. <laughs> yes. That, gi- that, yeah. that give you a sense of the show, like Nanny and the Professor, uh, or yeah. Gil- Gilligan's, Gilligan's Island, Island Brady right. Bunch, the Sherwood Schwartz right. stuff. All the Sherwood Schwartz stuff. It's yes. about time. Uh, <laughs> it's about time. Uh, it's, about time. Yeah. it's about space. Right. About two guys in the craziest place. Right. They always told. They always told you the story of yes. the Green song. Acres, right? <laughs> Green, Green Acres. Green Acres. Green Acres. Another one. Green. 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 Junction. Yeah. My mother, the car. Anybody remember that one? Sure. Yeah. yeah. I don't actually mind that theme song. The, the, the show wasn't. Right. <laughs> the show was in, infamously song, bad. Song but I kind of like. Far better than the uh, show. That's and Gilbert sure. likes right. the Hogan's Heroes theme. Yes. Oh, yeah. yeah. I love yeah. that. Yeah, it's catchy. It's and, catchy. And the words to that, we are the... Uh, yeah, there are words to that one. We did, it, we did it on a mini episode. The manly men of war. That's it. We That's are it. marching in where thousands went before. Yeah, we did that. We all make choices. I also like... <laughs> That's good. Hold on. Hold on. You're good, Seth. You're good and you're quick. <laughs> we can't, we can't close it down. Here, here's an obscure one. I will invite our listeners and you, who might know it and, and you guys uh, to do, to uh, dial it up after the show. Hoyt Curtin's theme for Johnny Quest. Oh, yeah, that's great. Really wow. terrific. Yeah. Really yeah. terrific. And ambitious, ambitious for a cartoon. And, uh, and in, uh, because we're our friend Barbara Felden uh, Get Smart. Can we hear a little Get Smart? Who's got it? Oh, he's got it. Here we go. Something like that. Theme nice. songs, TV theme songs like them. Like commercial jingles. You all heard us with Richard Marks talking about his father, Dick Marks who wrote a lot of great classic commercial jingles. I think TV theme songs, Gil, are a dying art like commercial jingles. Frank, did you check what I... T- I remember the other night we were talking about uh, uh, Richard Marx's mom? Oh, yeah, tell us. Yeah, now, Seth, I don't know if you'd know this story, but I, I imagine you do, that um, when I was working and doing jingles, uh, the, the great story was how all it takes is one or two notes and you're making a fortune. And I, I believe she came up with and sang... Quasar. Yeah, pretty oh, sure. pretty right? cool. Pretty and cool. I, I remember an interview with John Lennon where he said he liked commercial jingles. And he said he thought commercial jingles were just as good as any, th- any of the early Beatles songs. They're harder to write. Wow. <laughs> Seth, do, do, do the composers of those like by Menon if if the, if they bring back those commercials, even if it's just a couple of notes, they still get residuals. Those composers. Sure, sure. Depends where it's played, but yeah, yeah. Um, a friend of mine wrote a Polaroid commercial years ago. Times when they had one of the cameras, it was called Time Zero mm-hmm. Polaroid, mm-hmm. and he wrote it. Time Zero. <laughs> 
to go to shopping mall with the money. Okay. Wow. <laughs> there, there was a wow. gum. I, there was a gum, I think, called Tea Berry, and that they had the Tea Berry Shuffle. Am I the only one who remembers this one? I don't remember the Tea Berry Shuffle. Yeah. Da 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 I know that song. Gilbert, you never cease to amaze me. That's it. Yeah, I remember that. Like, was it like a hit? Teaberry gum presents the Teaberry Shuffle. Is that a Tijuana brass thing? Yeah, it's like a Tijuana brass. Sounds. That's totally Tijuana brass. It almost sounds like we're having a heat wave sped up. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's Tijuana Brass. Sure. Good stuff. And uh, then there was one song which I'm sure they got the uh, Indiana Jones theme from. And that was, oh, Kent Cigarettes. To, to you know, to a cowboy, it just a uh, get paid to a smoke, uh, to a picnic, it's a summer's day. To a circus, it's a circus tent. To a smoker, it's a Kent. <laughs> Amazing! Wow. wow. I don't, Gilbert. I don't think I've heard that in forty-five years. <laughs> wow. And I once heard Paul Schaefer do like a Jewish song, like old Jewish prayer song, and I wish I could remember because there was a part of it where I said. That's the Munsters. Fascinating. Yeah. Wow. I think Jack Marshall was the composer of that. Does that ring a bell, Seth, or the Munsters theme? Well, it doesn't, it doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> I, Gilbert, I remember the Kent cigarette jingle. Yes. And I don't think I've heard it since I was eight, eight or nine or ten years old. Jack Marshall. Jack Marshall. Yeah. There you go. That that John's right. Fodiatis is right about that song. We talked yesterday. We were doing a tech test yesterday, and we were talking about how much we all love Vic Mizzy's Adams Family theme. Right. Yeah. Seth got Seth got to know Vic, and I knew him a little bit too. But that and that's great. But that Munsters theme. That is, that. I, that I remember. Ass. I remember rock bands covering it, like in the eighties. You know what I mean? It's still. There was one. Yeah. 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 Well, Eddie Munster, uh, Butch Patrick did that. Right, uh, right. That riff on it. Whatever happened to Eddie? John Murray, yes, I understand you are going to treat us to something special. Well, yeah, my uh, my daughter's been playing with me, so I thought it'd be kind of fun to have her uh, join us. That's wonderful, Samantha. Samantha, come on in. I hope Sam uh, Samantha. I apologize for everything you've heard up to this point. She hasn't. <laughs> have, you heard, have you heard all the stuff? Have you heard everything they've been talking about? Oh, good. She didn't oh, good. Thank heaven. Especially, especially that great stuff you said about me earlier, Gil. Thanks. Pull it dodge. <laughs> <laughs> How are I, you? I don't want a young person next to you. I... <laughs> <laughs> well, the headphones just went on now, so we're safe. Hi, yeah. Samantha. Hi. Welcome, to the, Hi. welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. <laughs> of course. Our pleasure. So Samantha has been uh, studying guitar with me, and, and she's been studying singing, and um, we've been having a great time um, keeping busy playing music uh, during this whole lockdown. So um, it's going to yeah. be a lot of fun. Are you ready? Okay. <laughs> All right, um, to give uh, credit where credit's due, words and music by Greg Holden and Drew Pearson. This one's called Home. Hold on to me as we go As we roll down
Just know you're not alone Samantha. Thank you very much. Wonderful. Bravo, John. Thank you, sir. What a treat. That's a lot of fun. We have we have a lot oh, of fun talent. together. That was great. A lot of talent in this family. He's right. Thank you. Yeah, it's so much fun playing together, right? It is. A lot of fun. Yeah, we have a good time. That was wonderful. Thank wow. Thank you. Wow, wow. Samantha, <laughs> you stay and listen to the rest of the show at your own risk. Okay, you got it. <laughs> Thank you for the warning. <laughs> If if you're lucky, I'll do uh, my Paul Williams with Charlie Tennant. <laughs> <Hold on. laughs> sure, what we'll give John sure. we'll, we'll, we'll give time uh, to John to lock Samantha in another room. <laughs> <laughs> okay, wow. see you later, kiddo. Thank, thank you, guys. That was really beautiful. <laughs> and speaking of Paul Williams, another question from a listener, Adam podlovsky any discussion guys of the brilliance of paul williams phantom of the paradise would be appreciated seth well i i know joe's really more familiar with the music even than i am but i know paul is so proud of that score Absolutely. he should be he should be he just I, I wish it was out more and people were listening to it joe yeah i mean it's one of those movies that he uh i'm i i can tell he appreciates it so much because it was it was looked at as a a bomb a failure back in the day and over the years people have been discovering it and uh my favorite is the one that goes but also i think it was was it the year i think it was before rocky horror and it sort of addressed a lot of the same kind of like glam rock you know, there's like theatrics, like shock rock, like Alice Cooper is parodied in it. And yeah, uh, it's really like timely in a way that, you know, was sort of, I guess, in some ways ahead of its time. Gilbert's, and I a, remember Gilbert's a fan. Winter comes and the nights grow cold. Some people get wise and you just get older and you never <laughs> listened anyway. That's the hell of it. <laughs> Good for nothing, bad and bad. Nobody loves you. You're better off dead. Goodbye, goodbye, <laughs> goodbye, goodbye. You'll want to say goodbye. <laughs> but yeah, I've watched I'm the just, movie uh, many, I'm, many, I'm very I, moved I hope, by that. I hope Paul realizes that that's a tribute. <laughs> <laughs> and you know I'm going to peel that audio off and put some background to it, right? Here's a silly fun. <laughs> here's a silly fun one for the group from our friend Andrew Lapasha. Uh, or Laposha. What, guys, in your opinion, is the worst novelty song to become a hit? Oh. John Fodiatis? They're coming to take me away. Uh -huh. Oh, Gilbert loves that one. <laughs> yeah! <laughs> Napoleon. Napoleon. Yeah, Napoleon yeah. the 19th or something. Yeah, or something like that. Yeah. The 14th, maybe? <laughs> Napoleon yeah. the 14th. Yeah. We're showing our Remember age. Remember when you ran away <laughs> and I got on my knees and begged you not to leave because I'd go berserk? Well... <laughs> You left me anyhow, and then the days grew worse and worse, and now you see I've gone completely out of my mind. Yes. And they're coming to take me away, ha ha. They're coming to take me away, he he, ha ha. To the funny farm where life is beautiful all the time, and I'll be happy to see those nice young men in their fine white coats, because they're coming to take me away, ha ha. This is a much better version. And, and the, that and guy's the, name, and he, 
He he is still with us. He's 82 years old. His name is Jerry Samuels. <laughs> and his sta- his stage name was Napoleon the 14th. Uh, okay, and, we're off. And we the, have uh, to get him on the show to <laughs> say yeah. that. With Happy on Susu, they can do a duet. <laughs> X, XIV, that's 14, right? XIV is 14, that's, correct. Yeah, Napoleon, correct. I can't even read Roman numerals. The 14, Gilbert, we got to call him and get him on. Oh, absolutely. Joe, Joe McGinty, uh, worst See, novel- that, that could be a way to fill up one episode. You have him seen that. And the pole uh, and Papillon Susu goes, me so horny. And then it's like, okay, this has been. Uh, that's, when, that's when the podcast goes totally dada. You know what I mean? Oh, my God. It makes you think it hasn't. Yeah. Joe, Joe McGinty, worst novelty song to become a hit. Uh, uh, I mean, I'm not a fan of Purple People Eater. You oh, know? Yeah, I mean, is that Sheb know. Woolley? I, I think. I, th- no, I think it could be. Yeah, I think you're right. I think you're right. But that, I'm not a fan of that one. I don't know. Yeah. But, uh, you know, the flip side of they're coming to take me away was uh, the, the whole song backwards. I don't know if anybody else knew that. Really? Oh, put on wow. I do remember that. <laughs> Good trivia. Wow. Like, yes, yes, yes. I, I have one Beatle album where the uh, backside of the album is uh, You Know My Name. Right. Look you up know- the number. Look up the number. Yeah. Yeah, I'm trying. What is the what's the, what is the single of that? The flip side of it was Let It Be. Was it Let It Be or Old it, Brown it, Shoe? One of those. It was one of those late singles. Yeah. yeah. Uh, John Murray, uh, least favorite novelty song that became a hit. Well, you know, I I, I think it's great when anybody gets a hit. And uh, me too. I mean, we're sitting here with Seth, and it. <laughs> Right. If if a songwriter makes a hit, however he makes it, it's great. Oh, um, so I don't I don't want to say anything bad. But based I, on quality. Right. So, but I'm always amazed that when a song makes it to uh, number one or whatever, and it's got one chord in it, it it's amazing, and it's an earworm and it gets in your head like the. Uh, <laughs> put the lime in the coconut and call me in the month. That whole, it's just one chord. Harry the whole time, right? The doctor, that that whole thing, and it, it's it's a huge hit, and it's still you can still hear it on the radio whenever you turn around. My, we have that '70s station, and you know on uh, on Alexa, and you hear that thing pop up all the time. It's like they they must still be making money on that that number. That's and one chord. Right. And can yeah. one of you play when you're hot? You're hot. Ray, was that uh, uh, Jerry Jerry Reed? Yeah, oh, Jerry, Jerry Reed. Reed. Anybody got that? Yeah, who's, who's got that? No, I don't have that. Nobody. I don't, I don't, okay. <laughs> Next time we'll we'll give everybody a fake book. Right. Okay. Seth, what's a what's a novelty song that you don't care for? Um, Hey Mr. Custer. Oh right. right. You remember that one? Hey Mr. Custer. Wow. I don't want to die. <laughs> I don't <laughs> even think, song? I don't even think I know that one. I think you stumped me. <laughs> John Murray, you got it anywhere on the on the, on the iPhone? I've got I've got two thousand songs hey, on there. I'll, I'll pull it up. That's like a Doctor Demento. Uh, it was awful. Like, I, I, it, was, it, was the title "Hey, Mister Custer"? Hey, Mister Custer. I know. Yeah, hey, I know. Hey, Mister Custer. I know. Hey, Mister Columbus by Lou Monty. <laughs> No, this is a different song. This I don't want to go. Hey, Mr. Tambourine Man. I mean, there's a lot of yeah. mysteries. <laughs> I was I was never particularly fan a uh, fan of the streak. Ray Stevens. Oh, yeah. oh, oh, and then they call it the street. street. Yeah. 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 Uh, go, uh... <laughs> is this it, Yeah. 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 That very PC. Is the Never heard it in my life. <laughs> and from the rear, a voice was heard. A brave young man with a trembling word rang loud and clear. Don't look up the video. What am I doing here? <laughs> lead, Mr. Custer. <laughs> Is that Gabby Hayes on lead? <laughs> I've never heard that song in my life. Gilbert? Do you know wow. it? No, that one I'm not familiar with. Seth, you impress me. Oh, there you go. Pulled it out of there. It's head. almost got a ballad of the Green Berets vibe. A little it, bit. You know. Yeah. Right. You know, again, things that are gone. Mostly yeah. commercial commercial jingles are not what they used to be. Wow. Uh, uh, TV themes are not what they used to be. And when was the last time somebody released a novelty song? Well, you heard a novelty song on the radio, but of course, Top 40 Radio. 
My dad's only Isn't a uh, thing big anymore. recording was a novelty song years ago. It was Do Peter, tell. Peter Platypus. Peter Platypus, 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 always had a terrible time. That was his only, my dad, wow. <laughs> my dad's only single years ago. Wow. Wow. Yeah, well, he, he was with the Harmonica Rascals, uh, and, you know, they did a lot of tunes, but, you know, oh. that was... Uh, that Gil, was, we'll, that was have to, we'll have to find Jerry, and we'll do we'll, Napoleon the Fourteenth, and we'll do a whole episode of novelty songs. Oh, that yeah. That so cool. <laughs> but I, I want to talk to Joe McGinty about bubblegum pop. Okay. <laughs> and specifically, I want to recommend this book, Bubblegum Music is the Naked Truth, to our listeners and to you boys, and our friend Mike McPadden is one of the writers. Nice. Uh, one of the contributors in this book. Joe and I share a particular fondness for bubblegum pop, bubblegum rock. What do we call it? Yeah, bubblegum music, you know. Um, yeah, classic stuff. I know one of, we're both uh, – someday we'll get uh, Joey Levine on the show. I've been search, searching for Joey Levine. Yeah. But, uh, goody, yeah. goody gumdrops. Could he, could he go, Indian giver. Indian giver, yeah. Couldn't do that one. All yummy, yummy, yummy. Can't find them. Can't, you know. Gilbert, you uh, love these songs. We we used to do these yeah. one-hit wonder so, uh, uh, episodes of uh, mini episodes of the show, and Gilbert sang a bunch of them. <laughs> yeah, and, like sugar, sugar. Yeah, yeah. Well, we had Ron Dante. That's a that's a that's a so, that's a sing along. I forgot you did you did sugar, sugar with Ron. Ron Dante, yeah. Hey. So, Joe, uh -huh. okay. you're the man on the spot now. What do you got for us? So, uh, in honor of your shirt and bubblegum music, I'm going to do a Partridge Family song uh, written by Tony Romeo, who also wrote Indian Lake. I'm familiar wrote, with it. Uh, Gonna Make You Mine. Um, and, uh, you know, you're talking about music you discovered later, but when the Partridge Family were happening, it was, uh, they were, you know, my younger sisters were into them, but by then I was kind of into like Deep Purple and Alice Cooper, and I was like, ugh. But later, of course, I just understood the genius of the songwriting and the arrangements. And this song is such an odd hit because it's almost like a Kurt Vile song, and it was this huge hit. It's called I Think I Love You. sleeping and right in the middle of a good dream when all at once I wake up with something that keeps knocking at my brain before I go insane I hold my pillow to my head and spring up in my bed screaming out the words I dread I think I love you this morning I woke up with this feeling I didn't know how to deal with and so I just decided to myself I'd hide it to myself And never talk about it And did not go and shout it When you walked into the room I think I love you I think I love you So what am I so afraid of? Afraid that I'm not sure of A love there is no cure for I think I love you not what life is made of Though it worries me to say That I never felt this way And there's this great harpsichord solo you to your face. Do you think you love me? I think I love you. 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 OK, 
Okay, there you go. I had a special custom uh, forgotten chords there in the middle, but uh, man, there's a lot of chords, man. A lot of chords. Wow. You know, I'm, you know what I'm so impressed. I'm so impressed that you're playing the melody, the chords at the same time during those verses, and that's it's something a lot right. of us don't do. We're, we're constantly <laughs> hammering out the chords on and and comping. You're actually playing the the, the melody with that. It's really cool. Yeah, it's a tricky, it's a weird progression. I don't know what you would even call some of these chords. But yeah. Bell, Bell, Bell Records, it was a silver label. Right, right. Partridge Family. Yep, yep, yep. And Cassidy could sing. Right. Could sing. You know, those records, you know, bubblegum music gets, you know, a, a lot of people dismiss it. Uh, you know, but uh, the, as, as Joe was saying, the construction of those songs, uh, and a lot of those Partridge Family songs, I mean, I woke up in love this morning, and I'll meet you halfway in 24 hours a day, and... And, and so many of them, uh, uh, Tony Romeo, uh, terrific songwriter. Those bubblegum songs were very much like jingles, the way they were constructed. Absolutely. Look, yeah. at, the, look at the Dawn stuff, uh, Ir uh, Irving Levine. Is that the songwriter, Seth, knocked three times? Irving Levine, you still live in Livingston, right here. Yeah, great stuff. And uh, yeah, r really, really simple construction, but, or a song like Sugar Sugar. Yep. Like, I always thought the theme to Friends was Pleasant Valley Sunday. Hmm. If you play the two side by side, they really sound alike. Oh, that's interesting. Interesting. Also, Carol, somebody else. Carol King from Pleasant Valley Sunday. Somebody else yes. pointed out that uh, Pleasant Valley Sunday is very similar to um, I Was Alone, I Took a Ride. I didn't know Got to Get You in My Life. Yeah, it's that, yes. uh, that uh, F -O, uh, over G. Right. That right. chord. Yeah. Wow. Joe, that music that music just brings a smile to my face. Yeah, you know, love all of it. I think one of the first albums I had was an Ohio, Ohio Express album. Um, mm. And I remember, like, Wonderama would play a lot of those songs. You know, <laughs> oh, <you'd> sure. Be... <laughs> oh, sure. They also used to put bubblegum records, and Gil, we've talked about this. They used to put the singles on the back of cereal boxes. Right, right. Yes, it used to be this, like, was practically paper. It was a plastic <laughs> that was... And also in the pages of Mad Magazine. Oh, right. yeah, you could get a 45. Yeah. The flexi yeah. disc. Yeah. I got to get Jeff Barry on the show. Je Definitely. He'd yeah. Gotta, gotta, Seth, you're going to help me find Jeff Barry. Before we, uh, before we do our plugs and promote our, our various charities and all of that stuff, here's a very simple question for each one of you, and we'll start with our pal John Murray. Okay. What is a song that brings you pure joy a song that always brings you happiness and can change your mood what what you won't do for love by bobby caldwell i could hear that song until i'm dead and it, i never get tired of it could you play a little of it for I'll us do guitar better. My guitar is out of tune, but yeah, that song, I could hear that until I'm dead. And every time I hear That's it, wonderful. it just makes me happy. I blast it in the car. I blast it in the morning. I never get tired of that song. I didn't know it by name, but of course, it, once you started playing yeah, it. Yeah. How about you, Seth? Same question. <laughs> they said that things are not the best of times, but they're the only Summer Highland Falls, Billy It's Joel. a great one. I will never turn it off. If it's on the radio, it comes up, never turn it off. From the Turnstiles album? Beautiful. It's great. It's a, it's a great one. Mr. Fodiatis, same question. And if you can play, play us a little bit of your answer. There, there are so many. Uh, this Beatles one I really like a lot. Uh, you'll, you'll recognize it. Uh, two of us wearing raincoats Standing so Right. 
anyway, you you great. know the rest. It's a great one. Yeah. Joe. Joe. I have to, I have to show this to you. So this this was on my wall. Oh, look at that. It was a hard shape. Yeah. Right? And uh, check this out. I mean, look at this thing. Wow. wow. Isn't that crazy? Wicked? I mean, come on. Crazy, I got man. this like I think in 1977, 1978 is when this thing came out. And That's I still cool. Have it. Yeah. That's cool that that exists. Yeah, it's up on Joseph, my wall. what's a song that brings you joy and happiness? Well, I think this song uh, brings me personally a lot of happiness, but I think it brings a lot of people happiness. And uh, it's by one of your favorite guests. And. Uh, Why are there so many songs about rainbows? And what's on the other side? Rainbows are visions, but only illusions. And rainbows have nothing to hide. So we've been told, and some choose to believe it. I know the wrong way to see Someday we'll find it The rainbow connection The lovers, the dreamers, and me Beautiful. Nice. This I mean, has turned all... into a Paul Williams tribute. I mean, show. I... <laughs> I mean I, I've... Did he die? <laughs> <laughs> you know, I've always loved the song, and... Uh, you know, but it's also tied into special memories of Paul coming to Losers Lounge, and you oh know, yeah, it's, it's one of the all-time highlights. Way. Yeah, you know, so it even has double happiness for for me now. It's a great one. I'm going to pick one that somebody mentioned uh, earlier. Uh, uh, a peace train, Cat Stevens. Oof. And on the subject of trains, I also love. It's a great one. I, I defy the great. <laughs> I defy the song Love Train by the OJs to not make you happy. <laughs> Gilbert, what's yours? I don't know. This scared me that you'd come to me because I so there's many got, there's gotta be one. Just about anything uh from also our previous guest, just about anything from Zapped. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's a very obscure response. Yes. <laughs> but we we will try to get Charlie and Paul back here. Oh, uh, absolutely. Again, again, guys, this was fun. Let's uh, let's go around quickly and do uh, and do our plugs. Um, Joe, repeat the stuff you said uh, at the top of the show about Sid's Gold. It's it's nightly on uh, online. Uh, right. Uh, Facebook.com slash Sid Golds. Uh, there's SidGolds.com website. I have my own website for my own music, joemcgintymusic.com and loserslounge.com for uh, future Losers Lounge shows. At the moment, we're planning to be back in October, so we'll see how all that goes. But uh, thanks for letting me plug. Wonderful. And and we, we want to plug, too, a charity that you've been raising some oh, money for, Race oh, Forward. Oh, yeah. Raceforward.org is a, uh, a great um, educational program um, educating people, you know, just kind of bringing people together. And uh, if you go to raceforward.org, you'll be able to donate there. We've been doing that with the Sid Gold's uh, uh, live broadcasts. Okay. John Murray, anything to plug or promote, my friend? Well, in a few weeks, uh, I have a mini EP coming out called The Wrong. And then uh, I write under the name uh, PE Music. So for uh, all of the listeners that have kids, I've um, got my Bright Buckle series. Uh, and you'll, Gil, you'll like the, the title of the one of the books. It's... Uh, the bully, the dinosaur, and the fart machine. I mean, come on. <laughs> My favorite after-school special. Uh, you know, it's, it's got everything. It's your three food groups. Bullies, yeah. dinosaurs, and fart machines. Uh, so it's, yeah, it's <laughs> Spirit of Baxter time. Bernie was in that one. Uh, <laughs> um, I think oh, man. that's terrific. John Fodiatis, plugs. Things are happening with you. Things are happening. Yeah, I've got two, uh, uh, two new tracks out on Big Stir Records out of L.A. Uh, it's a, it's a part of their digital singles. So if you go to Big Stir or if you go to Empty City Squares on Bandcamp or SoundCloud, you'll hear them. And yeah, I've got uh, a third album in the works. So Empty City Square, streaming everywhere. It's all good stuff, you are, too. He's good Thanks. stuff. Yeah, good, really good, good songs. Good songs. Thank you. Catchy. Mr. Saltzman. Yes. 
we have a couple of things. So first, um, ASCAP. So if you're bored, every week uh, we are doing the ASCAP experience, which is our annual songwriting conference. We usually do it in LA, live in person, but we moved it to a virtual world. So it's free. Uh, go to ASCAP.com, type in ASCAP experience. You'll hear three or four hours of great singer-songwriters talking about their craft, talking about the music business, publishing. It's very informative and a lot of fun. Uh, we've had Phineas on, Billie Eilish, a uh, uh, whole bunch of good people are going to come on in the next few weeks, so tune in there. Uh, and Why Hunger? I'm the chairman yes. of the board of an organization called Why Hunger, um, founded by Harry Chapin. I know Gilbert has come out and done a couple of things for us at uh, Gotham Comedy Club a few years ago and some other events, but uh, we're helping people find good nutritious food. And if there was ever a time when hunger is on the front page, it's been the last four months. So uh, support us and check out whyhunger.org. It's a good organization and you do a lot Thank of you. you do a lot of valuable, important work for it. Thank you very much. So uh, yeah, so Why Hunger and Race Forward, two important uh, organizations. If you've enjoyed this show, and how could you not have, <laughs> support these wonderful charities. Gilbert. Do you want to take us out with some music? Dummy in the window? Something from Zapped? Oh, uh, something's happening to me. Where is that quiet kid I used to be? Not long ago, one I used to know. Suddenly my life is strange. Suddenly my whole world has been changed. Turned inside out. Makes me want to shout. Here I am. Take a look at me. I'm <laughs> high as a kite and I'm twice as free like a dream. That was meant to be. This time I'm fine and I'm not going to run from it anymore. Not going to hide like I did before. Going to find what I'm looking for. This time I'm fine. I'm gonna shine. Cause I'm ready to get what you got if you're ready or not. Wow. Beautiful. Uh, Dara, I'm awesome. getting emotional. Okay. I, think I, I think I lost like 10 no. neurons with that. Send this clip to, <laughs> send this to Charlie Fox to you know, get him back. There's so much you did tonight, Gil, that is going to end up with a background track. <laughs> he's gonna he's gonna put a background track you know on the album. Come on, every time he does something like that, when he did after the fox, you know, you sang it oh, straight oh through. Do you remember doing that after the fox? I want to let you know that the I am a thief, that was you too. Oh, that was you on there too. And I just, <laughs> all all I just now, that was the only place a, I pitched you. That's a terrific song. There you that's go. It's great. Song. Gilbert, yeah. you never wow. cease to amaze. <laughs> so, you know, people can listen to all of those in the Colossal Playlist if they look it up. Private Eye Music, Colossal Playlist. And it has all of these songs and, uh, yes. you know, three quarters of them are Gil singing. So, <laughs> and, and John, are you going to make the ballad of Gilbert and Frank available? Well, yeah, sure. I mean, people can stream it right now. I've actually got a playlist on SoundCloud, on Empty City Squares of all the music I've done for you guys. And Ballad of Gilbert and Frank is up there. Nice. So, and, uh, and it's yours, Gilbert and Frank. So I've never been more guys, flattered. You guys could do whatever you like with it. Thank you, know? you very much. Thank you, yeah. guys. All, to quote Benny and Bjorn, thank you for the music. <laughs> Thank you for the music. <laughs> yeah. it's, it's been our honor. So follow... And now I've got rainbow connections stuck in my head. Well, there are, there are worse things to have stuck in your head. No, that's a great song. Follow us. Uh, support us on Patreon. Follow us on GilbertPodcast.com, on our Twitter. Thank you, boys. Thank you for this wonderful John hour and a half. Cody uh, Joe McGinty, John Murray, and Seth Saltzman. <laughs> The four amigos. <laughs> Can't wait to see you all soon. Thank you, boys. This is true. Oh, Lewis. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Right. This is his shit. Thank, thank you, guys. This is a shit. Thank you, Frank. Thank you, Gil. <laughs>
Thanks, thank guys. You. We love thank you. you guys. Thank job. you, Patreon. Oh. Thank you, Dara. Thank, thank you all. This was thank you, awesome. Samantha. I, I'll oh my let her God, know. that was a highlight for me, John. Thank you so much. You Great and your voice. daughter Thanks, singing. What, what a highlight. Oh my God, that was incredible. Sure.